Welcome back to Shannon's Club TV, where we offer a fresh perspective on classic cars seen on Australian roads and racetracks. You can catch up on a huge selection of past episodes on the Shannon's Club website, which is free to join. Still to come, we'll visit an owner's garage for a drive in an exceptional example of our feature car. We'll also get the latest market news from the Shannon's auctions team. Right now though, let's take a look at the Aussie Fords that introduced V8 power to drive race, rally and showroom success, the XR and XT Falcon. The XR's brilliance prompted the late lamented Bill Tuckey, editor of Wheels at the time, to predict that Australia's love affair with the V8 engine was about to arrive. Remember that the Falcon GT was still more than half a year into the future and Tucky's prediction was based on the Falcon 500 and the Fairmont. The road test in the November 1966 edition of Wheels is headed, New Falcon, the great leap forward. Now, more than ever, there's a V8 in your future, is the subheading. The prescient introduction reads as if it could have been written with the perfect vision of hindsight. Tucky wrote, Ford's new XR Falcon has stolen a march on the opposition in the biggest possible way. We could be looking at the most influential new passenger car in Australia in years. The new XR Falcon is undoubtedly one of the most important single steps in Australian automotive design, unquote. Although Australian buyers didn't rush for V8s in the way Americans did, this was indeed the beginning of a love affair. And Mark, surely the XR GT and its debut victory at Bathurst played a big part in all that. Well, it sure did, but what I find curious about Tucky's comments then in late 1966 about the, the first Falcon V8 creating this love affair with the V8 for Australia, you keep in mind that, that Chrysler Australia had released the AP6 V8 in August 1965, and the VC model had been released early in 1966. So. The V8 Valiant had been around for more than a year, and yet in Tucky's comments, that car just seemed to be ignored. Well, the, the difference is you had to buy a specific upmarket version to get mm. the V8 engine in the Chrysler, whereas Ford, with their marketing smarts, Bill Burke's marketing smarts, made the engine optional yeah, across so the range. So that was the difference. It get it the, across the range. That was the difference. The XP durability run showed the Falcon could handle, but the XR was better again with wider front and rear track and lower profile tyres. The manual steering though was absurdly low geared. At least the Fairmont got power assistance, which was a big deal in 1966 Australia. 1967 brought two local breakthroughs, the GT Falcon with Mustang bred 289 V8 and the long wheelbase Fairlane. In the September 1966 to June 1968 timeframe, Holden was left for dead as Bill Burke's marketing smarts redefined Ford Australia. After the XR came the more, more Mustang XT. The GT was no longer a limited edition and was also available in myriad colours, still including GT Gold. The 302 V8 superseded the 289 and the ZB Fairlane got quicker power steering. It was a delightful machine. When the Falcon is remembered, the XR and XT will always be right up near the top of history's page. Mark, it was the XR GT that put an end to the notion that big cars were ill-suited to Mount Panorama. Yeah, it sure did. And the XT proved that big V8 Aussie cars were great long distance rally cars as well. In 1967, Ford Australia laid it all on the line by backing three of its new and untried XR Falcon GTs in the Gallagher 500 at Bathurst. Based on previous failures by V8 powered sedans like the Studebaker Lark, many expected that the new Fords would be crippled by similar brake, tyre or wheel failures in trying to keep pace with the lighter Alfa Romeos. However, the critics had not factored in the superior performance qualities of the new Falcons nor three times race winner Harry Firth's genius in car preparation, driving and race strategy. As expected, the Italian cars were outgunned by Ford V8 power on the straights. But the new Falcons did not suffer the mechanical failures many had expected. 
As a result, they gradually gained the upper hand, with Firth and co-driver Fred Gibson finishing ahead of Leo and Pete Gagan in a dream 1-2 debut. John, that victory proved the XR Falcon was indeed you know, really worthy of wearing that first GT badge on a Falcon, wasn't it? Yeah, Bill Burke, the four-door sedan with the GT badge, mm. it absolutely was. Mm. And it really, in a sense, it started that whole trend that became so famous in Australian motoring culture to putting high-powered V8 engines into, into basically family sedans, mm. HSV, FPV, all the rest of it. That was the first. And it really changed the face of, you know, grand touring, intrastate and interstate travel in Australia. Because we must remember back in the late 60s, not a lot of people flew. You know, aeroplane flight was quite an expensive thing. Yes, so it was. So people used to drive interstate a lot, big distances. And, and they, were, they were great cars. I remember Bill Tucky, whom I, I mentioned before, he, mm. he decided that cars like the, the, the Fairmont mm. V8, cars like that replaced the big Americans as the car of choice to drive interstate. Yeah, and they certainly proved that. It was they great, did. great time. In 1968, Ford commissioned Firth to prepare three of its new XT GTs with their larger and more powerful 302 V8s for the unprecedented 16,000 kilometre London to Sydney Marathon. Firth not only oversaw design, preparation and testing of these cars, but also drove one in the event. The Falcons were part of a global Ford attack, which also included multi-car teams from the UK and Germany. The big, tough Aussie GTs were handily placed after the first leg from London to Bombay. And, after a nine-day sea voyage to Perth, were in their element on the final leg to Sydney, surging up the leaderboard as others succumbed to the harsh terrain in which the Falcons were born and bred. Only 56 of the original 98 starters survived. All three XT GTs finished in the top 10, and by claiming third, sixth and eighth places, also won the prestigious Teams Prize. It was a stunning result against the best rally cars and works teams in the world, and most importantly, erased any doubts about the ruggedness of Aussie Falcons. Other great episodes of Shannon's Club TV are available to view anytime on the club website. Yeah, my name's Dean. I've got an XR GT Falcon that I've had for about 10 years. And I was lucky enough to find somebody who had a really good low mile original car. So really, I haven't touched the car besides the detailing. The car is totally original. Typically, all the XR GT Falcons are um, a gold. They did produce some other colours, which um, companies used for advertising. But typically, they're all gold with uh, black interior. It's a uh, you know, single exhaust system car, so it's a small, it's 289, it's a uh, you know, small, small V8. Four speed manual uh, car, they're all, all manuals. It's a very low mile car. For, for driving something that you know, was built in like 67, it, uh, it drives beautifully. Some people still think, you know, how the hell did they drive these cars around Bathurst at the speeds that they were, you know, up there in the dangerous conditions, so I enjoy my motorsport. I've been a Shannon's customer for about 30 years. I had a European car that I had an accident with. It was an expensive car and I was ready for the battle with Shannon's like you do with insurance companies. You sort of prepare yourself to go through a battle when you're making any claim. And the Shannon's customer service guy brought out my claim and he said, yep, we sent you um, your check off yesterday. And since that day, I've, um, I've always insured my cars with Shannon's. Uh, I'll keep the car. Everybody says they're going to keep their car, but then eventually they sell them. But uh, hopefully my kids will enjoy the classic style and what they've stood for in the Australian motoring industry. So I'll, I'll hang it on the car at this stage. Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon joins us to bring us right up to date on the XR and XT Falcons. Welcome, mate. Hello, Mark. How are you? Welcome, Welcome Chris. I'm thinking about the XR. Mm. Fantastic, really. That was the first ever Australian car to 
used the American ideal of having the V8 engine optional in every single Right model. across the range. Yes. Very yep. clever. It was yep. Bill Burke marketing at its best, yep. and that was when he was at its peak. Mm. Fantastic range of cars, the XR Falcons. Mm. I've got a soft spot for the XR. I think, you know, it's the first Falcon GT that mm -hmm. we saw here in Australia as well. Yep. Um, and to me, it's probably the most understated one. Um, a four-door GT. Four door GT. Bill Burke said his colleagues yep. thought he was mad. You don't have a four-door GT, yeah. but look, gee, who was there right? You yeah. You know, single exhaust. Yeah. Uh, you know, had that big horn button on it. Mm. Uh, the the Stuart wheels. Stuart Warner gauges yeah. and lovely the lovely detail. The lovely detail. Lovely Beautiful details. Detail. Yeah. The wheels are fairly standard, you know, the... Uh, you know, the, the skinny wheels on the, on the XR. Mm. But to me, it's probably one of the purest GTs we had. Yep. GT, yeah. GT yeah. Gold. Yeah. And there were two or three in Gallagher Silver for the That's cigarette right. yes. company that sponsored the well, well, that was, yeah, that, was one of the that was one of the uh, misnomers of that mm. car because there was a, oh, any colour you like as long as it's GT Gold. GT Gold. But, yeah. you know, for those in the know, <laughs> you could actually get all sorts of different colours uh, for XR GT. And the same applied when we came to, to XT GT. There was a, a bigger colour palette anyway. The XT yeah. GT was a regular part of the lineup. Mm. It was a, it was now set up as a model in its yeah. own right, and you could get a number of different colours. But there are a couple of rare colours that, that snuck through in among the mm. zircon green and the candy apple red yes. and the GT yep. gold. There was springtime yellow. Remember that? <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. lovely yeah. colours. Yeah. Probably the three colours that we really see today are, are the green, the candy apple, and the gold in the, Z, in the XT. So they're th probably the three most popular colours we see. And we also need to point out, of course, that the XT went to the 302 V8 it, rather it than did, the 289, yeah. and which you is quite an, an improvement. And you could get an automatic transmission for the first time. Yeah. So, yeah, they're quite significant cars. It's interesting, uh, the XT, so XT GT has sort of been you know, overshadowed, I guess, because it didn't win Bathurst, but it did extremely well in the London to Sydney uh, marathon. They did, and it that's proved right. what, yep. what great all-rounders the Falcon V8s were. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, famous cars, CAG 001 to 003. That's you know, there, you know, the ones. Silver there. Yep, yes, yep. absolutely. Uh, and, and those cars are worth, you know, good money today. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, quite rare cars, and I know a couple of those cars have been restored in... Uh, you know, in private collections, so nice but, uh, to see. And that was the, uh, under the, uh, the XR XT model range, we had the uh, ZA and ZB Fairlane, the introduction yes. of the local yep. Fairlane with the stretch wheelbase. Um, how are those things standing up in terms of desirability? Because they, they seem to be really rare. I see a lot of the ZCs, but I don't it, see those it, early ones. It was Bill Burke genius. Yeah. The Fairlane and the GT in mm. the same year to take the, the yeah. basic Falcon and mm. push it hard right. in the sports direction and then push yeah. it hard in the luxury direction. Yeah. Brilliant. It was the executive car of a day, I guess. Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, for, for, um, mm. for Australian executives. And uh, it, look, I, I think, you know, we saw a bit of a low with them over the years, but they've now picked up the Fairlane range. Say, they, must, oh, they must be yeah. very um, desirable. And they're, they're, you know, now, now becoming more and more desirable. And yeah. you remember there was the entry level, the Fairlane Custom. Even mm. the name was quite clever, you know, mm. picking yep. up on that name from the 50s. The, the, mm. the Fairlane Custom, quite a basic car, but very refined. Mm. Okay, thanks, Chris, for bringing us right up to date. No thanks, problem, Chris. And remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's Auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own competition image of the XR and XT Falcons, visit the huge motorsport archive at autopix.com.au. It, 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 when, interesting when you reflect on these two cars, John. You know, the XP Falcon with the, the durability trial, that, that cracked it in terms of Australians believing the Falcon was tough enough for the job. But the XR and XT, they really consolidated that message, didn't they? Well, that was a marketing effort too, the XP mm. durability run, but the real marketing effort came with the XR, mm. expanding the direction of the Australian car in so many different ways and doing it so well mm. and brilliantly marketing it as well. And I think that was a really nice matching pair, having the XR winning Bathurst, having the XT doing so well in the London City Rally. That's racing, rallying. V8 powered cars, it just had the, boom, they, boom. they covered the whole spectrum they in terms did, of you know, did. performance and versatility. And I think also in driving that message about the great Australian road car, you couldn't have done it better without those two victories. No, that's exactly right. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the XR and XT Falcons, and we look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.